Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Today, we're going to address some of this Ubuntu 32-bit insanity that uh, if you're in the Linux world, you've seen some of this stuff drop on down to the bottom. And uh, there is a little bit of misunderstanding here. And then some inf interesting information came out. And then there was some re-clarification. And so let's kind of talk about this situation, particularly since my channel is geared more towards a person who's not specifically an under the hood computer expert. Um, so what is going on here? So the first thing we have to understand is there is a difference between a 32-bit operating system and a 32-bit application. So for example, the development computer that I have that still has Windows 7 on it is a 64-bit operating system, which can run 64-bit or 32-bit applications because a lot of operating systems can do this. All right, of course, Windows 10 still supports Win32, that is Windows 32-bit applications, and attempts to stop this it just doesn't go very well. There's a lot of legacy things that still need to be run. There's a lot of, a lot of other functions. People still need their systems that are 32-bit support only. So it makes sense for an operating system to keep 32-bit uh, um, support, whether or not the operating system itself is on 32-bit. So first to kind of clarify what we're talking about, if you were to go to the Ubuntu download page, we have one option. It doesn't specifically tell you here because in reality, most people that are on the internet going to be downloading an operating system are on a 64-bit system. So it does make sense that for Ubuntu to get rid of 32-bit operating systems. If you go to Linux Mint, uh, which is my favorite, you'll see that you have options for 32 and 64-bit. This means for your processor architecture. So if you were to have a 32-bit computer, which is going to be a 12 to 15 year or older year old computer, most likely, you would have to have a 32-bit operating system architecture. If you're running anything newer than the last 15 or so years, you would need a 64-bit architecture. So why do you have both of these options and how does this relate to Ubuntu dropping 32-bit and what caused the whole Linux world to kind of go a little crazy? Well, because a 64-bit operating system on a 64-bit architecture can still support and run 32-bit applications. Okay, so this dropping 32-bit support does not mean dropping 32-bit operating systems. They did that a long time ago, and it's not the end of the world. Um, I think Ubuntu Mate still supports 32-bit, although I think the next version won't. I, I don't know. Uh, but then what ended up happening is about last week, we have a lot of articles coming through the, uh, the regular, um, you know, the, the, the usual suspects. It's FOSS, OMG, Ubuntu, where they're saying Ubuntu 19.10 dropping 32-bit support puts developers in trouble. And there's a whole argument here. And I know on the Big Daddy Linux channel, there was um, somebody from Ubuntu there. I'm not sure uh, which one it was. Uh, probably uh, Mr. Pope because he shows up at those a, a lot. Uh, and there was a lot of discussion back and forth and a lot of people frustrating their, uh, their concern. And this is very reasonable because what is one of the number one things that holds Linux back? It's the fact that game support isn't very good. And the only organization really pushing forward on game support on Linux is Steam. And they said they're going to stop supporting Ubuntu over this 32-bit compatibility drop. Now, again, this has nothing to do with the architecture and the operating system. It has to do with the ability of the operating system to still run 32-bit applications. Why is this a big deal for Steam? Because most video games are still written in a 32-bit architecture. And most people that want to hold on to their old legacy games want to be able to keep that 32-bit architecture. So if you think of the old favorite games you've used to have, maybe you bought the disc form, you got your Warcraft, you got your Civilization, those are the two games I have anyway, they wouldn't run on this if you dropped this support, even if you were to install something like Wine. And of course, Wine comes back and says, eh, we don't like you doing this either. So the two big holdouts for people switching to Linux, being able to run some of your legacy Windows programs and being able to game would be completely shot dead by this move. 
Now, why was Canonical even thinking about this? Well, it's no secret that Ubuntu is gearing themselves more towards an enterprise type system. They stopped working on the Unity desktop so that they could refocus their priorities back into a cloud, back into IoT. With those areas, those are areas that don't really need 32-bit support. What they didn't count on is a lot of the outrage from the fact that most of your small distributions they're based on Ubuntu and they did not like this because it would mean that they couldn't use the distribution for Wine, they couldn't use the distribution for Steam. That does some serious damage to your user base. Now, um, I don't know what Linux Mint stance was going to be. Pop OS, still based on Ubuntu, was going to continue to support 32-bit um, had, this, had this come out. So, of course... Um, OMG Ubuntu comes out. They also reported on this. Of course, they just updated the article because there is an update to the situation. Um, that's just a little bit. I'm not sure why I kept that window open. Um, and then here, uh, what ended up coming out is that no, Ubuntu is not dropping 32-bit appli uh, support application. So another article came out and clarified it. So in response to all of this, Ubuntu's blog just released this post today. And they're going through this and they're looking at a few specific applications. And it's the two we already mentioned. Number one, Linux gaming is big. Steam not supporting Ubuntu is a boom <clears throat> right in the head of Ubuntu. That would seriously hurt its user base. It would cause a lot of other distributions to scramble and change their core packages. It would cause a lot of decline because a lot of people using Ubuntu use it because it's easy, it's simple, and it's officially supported by Steam. Now, I'm not sure if Steam is probably going to update their, uh, their responses in regards to this, but rest assured, despite no, they're not bringing back a 32-bit architecture, there's no reason to do that, but they are bringing back a curated 32-bit multi-lib library, which will allow Steam and Wine applications to still run. So if you got your old legacy games you want to run on Wine, you can still do it based upon this post that they just released today. So calm down. Ubuntu is not dropping 32-bit support after all. So they uh, pulled in feedback from a few places. The gamers. Thank you, gamers, for speaking up. Absolutely. That was a good thing to do. Ubuntu Studio. Remember, there's only a few studio packages that really do a massive job of pulling in sources and ideas from a variety of different places. Ubuntu Studio is still one of the best in that area. They come, came in and said, no, there's still a lot of 32-bit application support we need. And then the Wine community, of course. And, and who would do like, hey, no, no, kidding. Wine is a Windows, um, it stands for Windows is not, uh, Wine is not an emulator. It is a Windows compatibility layer that allows you to run select Windows applications on Linux. And uh, those three communities responded back and gave them an extra voice and Ubuntu or Canonical, the company behind Ubuntu, said, no, we're not dropping the 32-bit application support. No, you're not going to see them come back and have a 32-bit operating system. That is, I think, what caused the biggest concern because some people were saying, oh, that's no big deal. 32-bit's so old anyway. It had nothing to do with the old operating systems. It had to do with the ability to run a uh, a 32-bit modern application in the system itself, whether it's based on 32 or 64-bit architecture. And that's where a lot of people got confused. It's kind of like that whole Microsoft miscommunicating because they have Outlook as a service and Outlook as an application. Someone in their marketing team needs fired. Um, but they went on and said, we'll place in, uh, we will not place the community, uh, a community process to determine which 32-bit pa uh, packages are needed to support legacy software and how to add these lists post-release if we miss something that is needed. Um, so there are places that you can go and have some conversation. Um, of course, the 1804 LTS crowd, no issues at this point in time, but it does seem that uh, the 32-bit libraries are going to be safe. Now, it's not going to be everything. Now, what, like, why would they even think about this? A lot of it had to do with the cost. There are a ton of these old 32-bit libraries that almost nobody used, but there were enough of them among the Wine, the Steam, and a few of the uh, studio creators that they can select down and they can drop a lot of them that they don't need and they can maintain the ones that they will need which actually might mean better support going forward because there's fewer packages and more people working on those individual packages. 
So, uh, of course, Wine, Ubuntu Studio, and Steam is the real uh, uh, the real release here. So definitely go through, uh, read this article. I will have this linked in the discussion down below or in the description down below. Uh, leave me your thoughts. Uh, does this make you happy? Does this make you sad? Do you still not understand it? Uh, let me know in the comments down below.